today, morning is here. And welcome to another episode of Saturday, Saturday Morning, Morning Cartoon Max, Max Out! We are here to bring to you the last episode of Action Max for this season. The next season will be slightly different as we have had some one-offs that have been included in this season. The single run pilot only cartoons. And if you can find out what those are, three of those will get you entrance to a possibility to win a Thundercats blanket and a Max Out t-shirt. So make sure that you don't miss a single Saturday moving forward because Saturday mornings are where, Yizzle? Here. That's right. Moving forward, we just wanted to reach out to you as we did within a community post and let you guys know that we were a little behind the past week. We had some family business that we had to go out of town for and we were away for a little while, which kind of put a damper on the progress of the normal scheduling of things. But don't worry because we will be answering all of your comments if we haven't already, as well as sending out merch to those who need it. That being said, we wish to introduce to you the conclusion of the Action Max lineups for the first season. Dun, 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 So what do they need to do, Yizzle? They need to go get themselves a heaping bowl of their favorite part of a balanced breakfast with cherries in it. Cherries are good. And hang out with us from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. what? Eastern Standard Time. Right here on Saturday Morning Cartoon Max Out! <laughs> After years of peaceful existence on the distant planet Valoria, Questar and his people were forced into battle. The power of their step crystal ripped a hole in the fabric of time, sending them backward to prehistoric Earth. Unaware that at the same moment the evil Emperor Krulos was plotting to capture the step crystal with his own grotesque Rulon forces. And so the battle continues in a new place in time with Dino Riders. Looks like I won again. Shh, listen. Did you hear that? Hear what? I didn't hear anything. I thought I heard a Tyrannosaurus Rex. That isn't a Tyrannosaurus. But that is. Let's get out of here. Oh, great. Stranded. Now what are we gonna do?
most powerful creature on Earth. Croc, we must recapture him. We are ready, Lord Krulos. Go, bring him to me. I will reward you generously. Yes, Krulos. Soon the Tyrannosaurus Rex will be mine once again. This time, I will crush the Dino Riders once and for all. We're very fortunate to have the help of so many dinosaur friends. Indeed, none of this would have been possible without them. Come on now, move! Let's go, you stubborn tank! Whoa! Hey, wait! No! Stop! Hold up, my friend. Next time, use your amp, Commando. Yes, sir, Questar. Uh, of course, there uh, are still a few problems to overcome. Questar! Tark! Over here! Look what this Pachycephalosaurus can do! It's amazing! All right, now. Let's show them. That's showing them? Questar, Tark, I give you Demetrodon. Three tons of fighting force, sure to trample rule on invaders in a single bound. But do you notice anything special about this creature? No, can't say that we do. Good. Otherwise, he'd be out of a job. Okay, Tag, show your stuff. Surprise is the key to victory. That's great, Gunner. Yeah, really. See what you can do with this. Suppose you tell me what it is. It's a stegosaurus. Well, it looks like an overgrown porcupine to me. Porcupine? Yeah? Well, we found it taking on a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Why, he's a natural born warrior. Okay, Gunner, tag, take our newest warrior and see what you can do. of the universe is about to begin. The Rulons! They're about to attack! Quickly, we'll have to trap them in the canyon. The Demetrodons are harmless. Leave them be. The clever Dino Riders seal off the escape route. It's up to you, Commandos. Now! Leaping into the path of the thundering giants, the Commandos close off the front of the pass. Blast them to bits, Admin. Put this in your Easter basket, Krulos! Don't forget to ride home, Rulons! The Dino Riders put on the finishing touches. But Krulos escapes on Tyrannosaurus Rex. Look out! Sky! The Stegosaurus! Take this, lizard lips! I'll be back, Questa. The battle is over, but the action's just beginning with a complete Dino Riders collection. Dino Riders! The power, Dino Riders. The evil Rulon shackled the Dinonychus. Raybox on attack. They're sitting ducks. Heroic Questar on Diplodocus opens the secret pod. They're firing on me. Look out for the trap. Take this, Edhead. The hidden rockets blast the evil Rulon. We'll meet again, Questar. Diplodocus with motorized walking action. Dinonychus and Tyrannodon with figures and battle gear, each sold separately. Dino Riders. I owe you an apology, big fella. We've got to get to the ship. Look! 
Everything's destroyed. Not our spirit. All right, calm down, everyone. Vector, what are we looking at? It's bad, Questar. About 70% damage to the ship and total destruction of our defense perimeters. All right, take some men and some pachycephalosauri. Start clearing the rubble out of the way. Only a few of the dinosaurs are left. The rest fled when the rumbling started. We're defenseless without the dinosaurs. Krulos will attack. They haven't all left. Great. One dinosaur against all of Krulos' armies. Gunner's right. We must get the others back. If Krulos finds them, he'll brain box every last one. Tag, you and Gunner organize some men. Move out and do it fast. We've never been so open to attack. Can I go with them? It's okay by me, Questar. We're going too! Not so fast. I need you both for something more important. I didn't want to alarm the others. The power source for the space-time energy projector has been destroyed. How badly? Completely, Youngstar. But it gets worse. If we don't unfreeze the steps generators, we may lose it forever. We need an alternate power supply. We need lava. Lava? But that means... Penetrating Rulon controlled ground. Now I understand. Tark here will be able to guide you through the least Rulon infested region to the volcanoes. Okay, but don't make it too easy. I'd like to bash a few Rulons. Opportunity, my bug-headed friend. Let me see. Let me see. Hey, what opportunity? I just see a bunch of dinosaurs. Of course you do, Ant Brain. If we bring them to Krulos, we shall resume our commands. Oh, yeah. There they are. We've got to catch them before they get too near the Rulon. Come on, let's go get them. hey -ya! Not yet! A dino rider! It looks like this is our lucky day! What... what happened? Caught you sleeping on the job, eh? Uh, let me go! It's the last thing I do on Earth! All right, one more blast and we're done. Ready, charge! it, young star. I think it's about time to head back. Well, there are some advantages to having a dinosaur shortage. Oh? 
And what's that? It's a great opportunity to get closer. Just take us home, Dino Rider. You did too good of a job, Tark. Not one Rulon the entire trip. But we could have used some excitement. There will be plenty of time for... <gasps> Serena, young star, what is it? Will you look at this thing? Greetings, Valerians, or should I say, Dino Riders? <laughs> Looking for trouble, Snake Eyes? I wouldn't do that if I were you, young star. You might soon regret it. Uh Chance it! I have a message for Questar from Krulos. Krulos has nothing to offer us. Don't be so hasty, Dino Rider. I'm sure you'll be very interested in our uh, offer. <laughs> Bring the Dino Rider to me. Uh, let me go! Let me go! Lad, but how? I'll get you for this, Rat! Of course you will, young star. Now listen and listen good. If Questar ever hopes to see your Dino Rider friend again, he will deliver the space-time energy projector to Krulos at once. Stay right here. We'll be back after these messages. The battle for water. The evil Rulons build a dam to cut off the Dino Rider's water supply. Lying in the mud again, Krulos? With what, Krulos? The Pachycephalosaurus moved the boulders. What's wrong? Got a tummy ache, T-Rex? The Stegosaurus breaks the dam. I'll get you yet, Tark. Stegosaurus and Tyrannosaurus Rex with motorized walking action and Pachycephalosaurus each with figures in battle gear. Dino Riders! Cannons. Mandibles. Omni lasers. Proton cannons. Buzzsaw omni lasers. Broadside rockets. Tri laser. Quest star. Kulos by Tormeko. The evil Rulons are tired of playing games. You are finished, Quest star. They want the Dino Riders' time key. Your brother eats flies, Kulos. The greatest battle in the history of the universe is about to begin. Tyrannosaurus Rex and Diplodocus with motorized walking action and Monoclonius, each with figures in battle gear. Each sold separately, batteries not included. Hardest power, Dino Riders. The Dino Riders are ambushed. We've got you outnumbered, Gunner. Get you trapped, Hammerhead. The evil Rulons on Triceratops close in on the Dino Riders. I've waited a long time for this, Gunner. Laser cannon fire distracts the Rulon beast. Sure hope you can swim, fish bait. Tarnasaurus and Triceratops with motorized walking action. And Dino Nikus, each with figures and battle gear. Dino Riders. Dino Riders are here. Dino Riders. Ten new dinosaurs in the Dino Riders collection. Stegosaurus with motorized walking action and full battle gear. The gigantic new Brontosaurus, the fighting fortress. The new Dino Riders are all equipped with armor and action figures. Now the most fearsome creatures to walk the earth are the greatest force in the universe. 22 awesome dinosaurs in the Dino Riders collection. Dino Riders. Only from Handing over the step to Krulos is out of the question. We cannot risk a Rulon invasion, Quistar. We must stall for time. Besides, they'd kill Lad for sure. I say we go in and get him! But how? And with what? Our dinosaur army is gone. Probably brain-boxed as we speak. If we don't do as Krulos asks, he'll be at our front door in no time. Krulos is not waiting for our reply. He only hopes to catch us off guard. Questar, let me show you my plan. Rasp! Take a group of vipers. You will make the first charge of the camp to draw them out. Move out, vipers! What do we do with the young dino rider, Lord Kuros? Guard him, Antor. And make sure he doesn't escape. <laughs> Brilliant, Lord Krulos. While Questar considers your ransom. We launch a surprise attack. 
can seize the step anyway. Because of you, boy, I will miss our great victory. Icon was right. Krulos moves fast. Go ahead and activate Project Stealth. We're counting on you. Yes, sir. Okay, let's move them out. We just got our marching papers. Stegosaurus reporting for duty, Questar. He's never seen this sort of action before, Tark. Do you uh, think he's ready? Yes, sir. Then let's go. Rulons, prepare to attack. <laughs> Slide. Go with your signal, Quest Star. Rulons, charge! Destroy them! Okay, Stegosaurus. Let's see you bring that Tyrannosaurus Rex down. Your laser guns are useless, Quest Star. This is a battle of the beast. Star, we must remove that Rulon breastplate. Can you bring me in closer on the left? I'll try. Here goes. Fiercest of foes and won. Great 
work, all of you. I just wish you could have seen Stegosaurus battle the Tyrannosaurus Rex. I knew he'd be a great warrior. Of course! He's a dino rider! lineup of Saturday Morning Cartoon Max Out is coming your way. What a meal, what a meal, a home full of cereal, what a meal, what a meal, a home full of cereal. When someone
governors, I ask you to give me a firm hand, and I promise to stop this dinosaur threat once and for all. Tenrek, get out! I didn't invite you. An old blood mechanic doesn't need your invitation, Sharnhorst. Captain Nock, throw this man out. Yes, Governor. Guards! No, let Jack stay. I think it's important to hear the opinion of an old blood mechanic about your plan. Nonsense. You know what they say. The machinery of life is a balance, and we have to maintain it. That's fact, not opinion. Exactly what do you plan to do about the Mac threat to our settlements? I will decimate this herd of Macs, removing that danger forever. Let's vote on it. What? Well, I think there's merit to your plan, Governor Scharnhorst. I, too, would like to hear Mr. Tenrick's reaction. Don't you all realize you're sealing your own fate and the fate of everyone in this city? What did I tell you? Really, Jack? Aren't you stretching things a little? Am I? Okay. Wipe out the Max. Why not? I believe why not is the reason we asked you to stay. So why not, hmm? Think. If Sharnhorst wipes out the Max, come next spring, what do you think the Cutters will eat? A cattle, that's what. Ridiculous. We'll post guards. Do you think guards can stop octopus weeds from choking our fields? Without any Max to devour those weeds, our crops will die, and the whole city will starve. So we'll poison the octopus weeds. And pollute our food, ourselves, and our children. The Machinato Vitae allows no shortcuts. There's a reason for life on every level of the food chain. That's true. What Tenrek calls the Machinatio Vitae is known by all Wasoons as the circle of life, and the circle must not be broken. Ambassador Dundee, I thank you for coming, but I remind you, you're only here as an observer. Yes, and what I observe is the fine job you're all doing to keep nature in harmony. As you know, what affects you today touches my tribe tomorrow. It's worth a vote. Personally, I've always wanted to see what Jack has up his sleeve. Then I move to let Tenrek handle this Mac problem. All in favor? All right, but only 72 hours, Tenrek, and then I step in. The Council has a responsibility to safeguard the settlement lands and the settlers. Good luck, Jack. Thanks. I'll need all I can get. Shall I stop him, Governor? Why bother? Let Jack hang himself. I'd hate to be in the path of those Max. Nothing can stop them. Well, Mustafa, according to old Jack, you're gonna be. And me too. What... what can we do out there? Evacuate the settlers? No. If we do that, the Max won't leave until they chow down on every last bite of our crops. Okay, what are we gonna do? We're gonna move them out. This is nuts, Tenrek. One of the privileges of weighing a couple of tons is that Max go where Max want to go. We'll make the Max want to go someplace else. And how are we gonna do that, Jack? Ask them, pretty please? No, we'll take these big beauties. I'll pilot the red one, and you drive the blue one, Mustafa. Uh, thanks, Jack. But exactly what am I going to do with it? Herd the Max to safe ground. Did he say, herd the Max? Since when do dinosaurs like to be herded? And with Cadillacs yet? The truth is, I don't know if it's gonna work, but it's worth a try. It will work, Jack. I've been to the library. What are you doing here? I'm a volunteer. I figured you need all you can get. Look, I found an historical precedent for your idea in this. In the old days, people drove their cattle to market riding horses. I heard about them cow punchers. In fact, I got some old cow puncher gear right here. They used these to punch the cows. But what I can't figure out is how they rode horses with them on. However it was, those were cows and Max are a lot bigger than cows and a lot meaner. Yeah, but this time we got 400 horses under the hood to do the job. What are you worrying about? I'm worried about their big tusks. Max have also got big ears. They'll move. Well, somehow I think we'll need more help than that. 
<laughs> no. <laughs> Put me down, Hermes. What? You mean him? Yeah, him. Let's get rolling. Make room for me. Huh? I'm coming. Why are you coming, Toulouse? The Council felt it vital that I should represent them in the field during this crisis of public safety to ensure cost controls are observed. Uh-huh. Can you handle a car? Without any compunction whatsoever. All right, then drive that one behind you. I guess we need all the help we can get. I entirely agree. I'm here to help. Uh, sorry. I'll put that car on my bill to the council. Ride with Mustafa. Mack tracks. Yeah, they're heading toward the settlements. Let's get rolling. Them's a lot of Macs down there. More than I've ever seen together. They seem peaceful enough now. Of course they do. They're eating all our crops. What now, Tenric? Okay, we'll surround them just like this. Then we'll bunch them up together and move them all out. It's working! Kerbo said we should try a magic chant the cowboys used on the cows. Oh yeah? What's that? It goes like this. Sweet. Look who's doing us a big favor, rounding up the Max. Sure gonna make our job a lot easier. Now we got Jack where we want him? Yeah, but I get the first chunk out of his carcass. We'll cut him off at the pass. Saddle up. Stay right here. We'll be back after these messages. starts talking, I'm gone. But he is talking, Hannah. The trick is to know what he's saying. Heads up, everyone. We got trouble up ahead. Here they come. It almost makes me ashamed this will be so easy. Yeah, me too. Almost. Well, I'm just completely torn up about it inside myself. But I'll live. And they won't. Hey, Hammer! We taking prisoners? Prisoners? What's that? 
<laughs> We're burning daylight, and there's dirty work to do, boys. Those poachers are going to spook the herd if they keep up that racket. Well, I don't like it either. Couldn't we have talked with them? Poachers, shoot first, talk later. Oh, no! Making friends? Yeah, lots. Do you think the old guy's finished? For now. At least he's headed in the right direction. Shh, he'll hear you. What? You're lying. I assure you, my governor, I'm not. That's impossible. Jack moved the Max? But how? I don't know how he did it. But the settlements are out of danger. No, I cannot let Tenrex succeed. Captain Nock? Yes, Governor. Arm the guard. We march tonight. They need water, Kurgo. Head them toward the river. I'm trying, Jack, but this old guy's got a mind of his own. He smells the river. Keep them together. We'll push the herd to Verrazano's Point tomorrow, drop down over the Bulgar Mountains into this valley. It's almost perfect. Even the poachers won't go back that far. Then what's worrying you, Jack? Our trail will pass dangerously close to Ida, a big mining town. Uh-oh. Anything goes haywire, or they're gonna end up hamburger. So we'll tell them to clear out. Miners don't leave their claims. We'll just have to be wide awake. Everybody get some shut-eye. How about some dessert first? What you got? Candied cactus. Ally. Kurgol. Pass. Pass. We'll attack at midnight. We'll whack them all in their sleep. Yeah, we'll whack them good. That's enough, Hammer. Sharnhorst, I've skinned plenty of things bigger than you out here. What do you want? What you want? Let's make a deal. The last deal we made with you left us with the short end of the stick. Just hear me out. You see, if a herd of crazed dinosaurs just happened to stampede through that mining town, a lot of people would be hurt, and a lot of people would be angry. And Jack Tenrick would be blamed for it and ruined for life. Tenrick's having a tough enough time moving that herd with his vehicles. What makes you think we'll do any better? Dynamite. Nice. If Tenrek manages to survive, I'll try him for murder. My guards will eliminate the Max. You'll get all the ivory. I'll be a hero. And we'll both be rid of Tenrek. Sounds good to me. In fact, 
This should be a real blast. Stay right here. We'll be back after these messages. What's got eyes and skin that's brown and grows underground? Groundhog. Nope. What's got vitamin C like a fruit, even though it's just a root? Turnip. I'm talking about potatoes. You gotta dig potatoes. With protein, starch, and minerals all built in. Boiled, steamed, or baked. They're a chance for mom to make. So when you want some, just say, hey, mom, give me some skin. You got to eat the skin. It's so good for you. Chicken flavor. Good food for active earthlings. A giant castle. <laughs> With a giant giant. <laughs> Let's go, Sue. Time for a Cheerios breakfast, kids. Yeah, Cheerios is a powerful part of this balanced breakfast. You got to go. Giving him as bad a headache as I've got. Better to have a headache than to be made into piano keys and billiard balls. I agree, but how much longer does this go on? Hey, bonehead, what you got against Cadillacs? Back off. That's telling him. <sighs> no matter what I'd read in them old books about cowpunchers, I'd hate to do this for a living. Me too. This is a real drag. Yes, but I was just uh, thinking about the agricultural advantage taming these beasts would bring to uh, the settlements. Do us all a favor, don't think. Sure glad we don't live in Ida. That town's gonna be flattened. Come on, Jack, come and get it. Yeah. Welcome to the Destruction Zone. Good shooting, Brother Terhoon. Nothing will panic a herd of dinosaurs like a nice little avalanche. <laughs> and maybe we'll nail Tenric at the same time. This rock's for you, Jack. Is that how you spell Jack? Yeah. J-A-K, Jack. Hmm. I thought there were two Ks. Do you think Jack's gonna check the spelling after this falls on him? Just hook up the line, Mikla, okay? Okay, okay, I just thought there were two Ks. I can't take much more of this. How much further, Jack? There it is. That's Verrazano's point in the pass we want. Right now, any pass will do. Keep coming. Keep coming. He's nearly in range. Okay, Jack. Ready for a little smoke in your eyes? Ready to blow, Hammer. Good. They're almost here. All right, Jack. Round two. Slow him down. The herd's headed for Ida. Yahoo! You're not 
leading them enough. I am so! Well, he ain't slowing down any. Take the wheel! What? You drive, catch the old bull. Under the rocks. No kidding, Toulouse. But where? Well, this arm looks kind of familiar. <clears throat> oh, are we having fun yet? got a new home, and it's beautiful. Now, let me patch you up. You're a mess. But I must admit, you do bring new meaning to the term old blood. Ow! Well, I learned one thing. Cadillacs and dinosaurs don't mix. Got me a souvenir of the drive. So did I. Let's hang this in the garage. The council thanks you, Tenric, for uh, saving the settlements and... Uh, for maintaining the balance of life. I didn't think it could be done. What was that all about? Oh, he was just saying goodbye. Sounded a lot like thanks to me. for another action-packed lineup of Saturday Morning Cartoon Max Out. This is the tale of Mr. Morton. Mr. Morton is who? He is the subject of our tale, and the predicate tells what Mr. Morton must do. Mr. Morton walked down the street. Mr. Morton walked. Mr. Morton talked to his cat. Mr. Morton talked. Hello, cat. You look good. Mr. Morton was lonely. Mr. Morton was. Mr. Morton is the subject of the sentence. And what the predicate says, he does. Mr. Morton knew just one girl. Mr. Morton knew. Mr. Morton grew flowers for Pearl. Mr. Morton grew. Mr. Morton was very shy. Mr. Morton was. Mr. Morton is the subject of the sentence. And what the predicate says, he does. 
the subject is a noun. That's a person, place, a thing. It's who or what the sentence is about. And the predicate is the verb. That's the action word that gets this subject up and out. Mr. Morton wrote Pearl a poem. Mr. Morton wrote. Pearl replied in the afternoon. Pearl replied by a note. <laughs> Mr. Morton was very nervous. Mr. Morton was. Mr. Morton is the subject of the sentence. And what the predicate says, he does. A cat stretched. The sun beat down. A neighbor chased his kid. Come here, kid, come on. Each sentence is completed when you know what the subject did. Mr. Morton knocked on her door. Mr. Morton knocked. Mr. Morton sat on her porch, yes, he just sat there and rocked. Mr. Morton was a nervous man. When she opened up the door, he ran. Mr. Morton climbed up his stairs. Mr. Morton climbed. Mr. Morton rhymed pretty words. Mr. Morton rhymed. Mr. Morton was lonely. Mr. Morton was until Pearl showed up with a single rose. Who says women can't propose? Now Mr. Morton is happy, and Pearl and the cat are too. They're the subject of the sentence, and what the predicate says, hey! In the year 1999, high above Macross Island in the South Pacific, a phenomenal event occurred in the skies which altered the course of human history. A gigantic alien spaceship broke through the very fabric of hyperspace on a collision course with the Earth. During its uncontrolled fall from the sky, the plummeting space fortress produced shockwaves of incredible force. The craft measured nearly three quarters of a mile in length. There was no sign of the alien crew, 
The armored hull had taken the brunt of the damage, leaving much of the sophisticated techno systems intact. What remained of the giant battle fortress gave evidence of a civilization that was light years ahead of Earth's most advanced thinking. Global war ravaged the Earth at that time, but even this devastation paled by comparison to the threat of invasion from outer space. A ceasefire was ordered, and world leaders banded together to form a united Earth government. Under the new government, the world's most brilliant minds formed a research team to study and restore the alien space fortress. Deciphering parts of documents found on board, they labored to unravel the secrets of an incredibly complex technology called Robotech. Convinced that the scientists had solved this complex riddle, world leaders ordered a celebration. For 10 years, the total resources of an entire planet had been focused on the restoration of the space fortress. A great city had grown up around the Robotech project, and today, on the eve of the ship's maiden flight, every citizen, man, woman, and child was gathering to celebrate their achievement and to witness the launching of their planet's new defender. Hmm, some big shots making their grand entrance. Captain Glovel doesn't seem too happy about it. Don't look so sour, Captain Glover. It's our big day. Surely you realize all those loyal citizens out there consider you their hero. I think you could at least wave to them. All right, I'll wave. The countdown has begun. On board the giant spaceship, the crew of raw recruits freshly graduated from the Robotech Academy is busy with the pre-launch checklist. Manual systems are green I light. I will now feed you the computer The ceremony starts, starts in 15 minutes. I hope the captain gets here in time. I hear he didn't get much sleep last night. Yeah, the other officers threw a farewell party for him. They probably sat up all night telling each other war stories. You know how they are. And where were you, Claudia? What are you talking about, hmm. Lisa? You didn't come in until 4 this morning. You must have been partying, too. You jealous? I had a late dinner with Commander Foker. Claudia! What? You stayed out all night knowing you both had flight duty today. So? What's the big fuss about, Lisa? We won't let it affect the performance of our duty. After all, we're not children and you're not our mother. Your responsibilities to the ship come first, Claudia. But my private life is my business. Nobody else's. Now then, let's get to work, all right? Get out of here. Lisa doesn't understand about men, Claudia. She's in love with this spaceship. Yeah, yeah you got that right. Important job to do here. Oh, don't argue. I'm oh. not the one who keeps butting into everybody's business. Oh, I'm warning you. I hate to interrupt, huh? but hadn't you better check your monitor, Commander? It's an unidentified oh. incoming aircraft, Lisa. Attention aircraft approaching on course 107. Please identify yourself. Please identify yourself. This is Rick Hunter, invitation number 201. That's confirmed as an invitation from Lieutenant Commander Foker. Follow course 57 for landing. Roger. And now we present a display of aerial acrobatics demonstrating the amazing advances we have made through robo technology. Lieutenant Commander Roy Foker, leader of the Veritech Fighter Squadron, will describe the action for us. Today, you'll see how we've applied human know-how to a complex alien technology. Keep your eyes on planes two and four. Flying at speeds of 800 miles per hour, only 50 feet above the ground, they will pass within just a few yards of one another. Robotechnology makes such precision possible. Huh? Oh, <laughs> no, Rick. Is that you, Rick Hunter? Roy, it's good to hear your voice, old buddy. I understand you're a lieutenant commander now. Are you crazy? Get that junk heap out of here. Hunter, when I get my hands on you, I'm gonna... Oh, uh, hey, Ed, switch this to radio only, will ya? What are you trying to do, buddy? Make a perfect fool on me? Uh, nobody's perfect, Commander. You haven't changed a bit, have you? Well, this isn't your dad's amateur flying circus. My men are real pilots. I'm gonna have to make you eat those words, Commander. Coming in.
there, Roy. Just who do you think you are? What were you trying to do? Get yourself killed? Hey, calm down. And while we're at it, where'd you learn to do that, anyway? It was just a simple booster climb. You taught me that yourself when I was just a kid. Hey! I have to admit, those guys are pretty good. Not as good as me, of course. You don't have to brag to me, Rick. I know all about your winning the amateur flying competition last year. Actually, I've won it eight years in a row. What have you been doing? I was busy fighting a war. I guess you didn't read about my having shot down 108 enemy planes. You're proud of being a killer? What? There was a war on and I was a soldier. I just did my duty. You promised my dad that as soon as the war was over, you'd come back to the air circus. Why did you go back on that promise, Roy? I really felt guilty about letting your father down. Only, this Robotech thing is so exciting, I just couldn't give it up. It just gets in your blood or something. I don't know. What is Robotech, anyway? Just more modern war machinery. And the aliens, huh? Well, Roy, I see you're still a big ladies' man. Blasting through a warp fold in deep space, a gigantic alien spaceship enters Earth's solar system in pursuit of the damaged Robotech vessel, which is eluded capture by slipping through the time-space continuum. The command ship leads a vast armada of battle vessels manned by the Zentradi, a race of warriors bred for thousands of generations for the sole purpose of military conquest. The finder beam has locked on this planet. Are you sure this is where the transmission was coming from? Yes, sir. I'm positive. They could have executed a refold. It's doubtful, sir. There was no evidence of a second drop into hyperspace. Hmm. They couldn't have gone far in their condition. They would have to have landed in order to repair the ship. That's a logical speculation, I think. I agree. It would seem very likely, sir. Send a scout team. Wow. This fighter's a real beauty, all right. It looks great, but how does it handle? Hmm? Well, why don't you just climb aboard and see for yourself? You mean that? Sure. I'll go along and ride piggyback behind you. The controls may look pretty complicated, but I'll check you out on them. I'm not worried. If you can learn to fly one of these things, I can. Don't be so modest. This is a day that we've all been looking forward to for ten years. The Robotech project has been a tremendous asset to the economy of Macross City Excuse and to the me, world. sir. Urgent message from the Space Monitoring Station. A strange flash of light and an explosion followed by irregularities in the gravitational field. The same sort of thing happened ten years ago. You know what happened then, don't you? That's when the alien ship arrived. Better check it out. Don't go away, because Robotech's coming right back. Stay right here. We'll be back after these messages. It's Breetai, the alien, and evil Chiron 2. They're out to capture Lisa because they're evil through and through. Robotech! To the rescue! But with hunters racing to the scene and Roy is by his side, first they'll save friend Lisa, then send the aliens for a ride. Here's my secret plan to save Lisa. Robotech! To the rescue! Start your collection of Robotech action figures, each sold separately, new from Matchbox. We won! I'll get you yet, Rick Hunter. A gargantuan alien battle fortress has penetrated our atmosphere. Robotech! With the advanced technology of the SDF-1, Robotech! You can defend against the Zentradi warriors. Robotech! Strategically deploy your battleoids. Robotech! Transform and attack. Robotech! Now you can be part of the story. Robotech! Robotech battleoids and SDF-1, new from Get ready, because Robotech is back. Every system aboard the ship is starting up. The defense system is activating the main guns to fire. Shut down all systems. It doesn't work. Oh, no. 
Exercise extreme caution. We have control now. What happened, sir? fireworks about I don't know I better go check wait here I'll see what's going on ah. Ah. the space monitor report is coming in it shows what our guns were firing at I have it here Sammy two large objects probably spaceships in lunar orbit 200,000 miles out both objects were struck dead center by the beam and were disintegrated uh huh <laughs> What are you laughing about? It was so obvious! We should have known! A booby trap, of course! Booby, booby trap, trap, sir? Yes, it's one of the oldest tricks in military history. A retreating enemy leaves behind hidden explosives and such. The aliens who abandoned the ship armed it with an automatic defense system designed to detect and destroy their enemies. The activation of the guns means that unfriendly forces have approached close enough to be a threat to us. Hmm. Yes, what is it, Sammy? No smoking on the bridge. Hmm. Huh? It's against regulations, hmm. sir. I was just holding it. I wasn't going to light it. Scramble all the fighters and prepare for combat. Enemy forces approaching in sector 412. Base crews are on the run. Deploying all the Zero, commence firing. to be a reason, but it's beyond me. Surely the Robotech Masters. Commander Brita, one moment. The two enemy space cruisers are approaching. They could be the ones who launched the missile bombardment. Blast them to bits. Those idiots behave as though they don't even know how to use their own weapons. <laughs> Full barrage, all cannons. finally achieved peace on our planet, now we face annihilation by alien forces whose power is beyond our imagination. I had hoped that war was a thing of the past, but here we go again. All right, move out! Yes, sir. All forces, move out! We are under attack by alien invaders in Sector 412. This is not a drill. Repeat, this is not a drill. All forces proceed at once in battle formation. Well, boys, you heard her. This is the real thing. Wolf team has cleared. Skull team, prepare for takeoff. Skull team ready. All right, then. 
This is it. Let's go. What a disorderly arrangement. These people are completely ignorant of space war tactics. What? That's Zor's battle fortress, but what's happened to it? It appears to have been completely remodeled. Perhaps by the inhabitants of that planet. Mere Micronians couldn't possibly have captured a Robotech ship. Maybe it crashed on their planet and they managed to salvage it. What about the crew? They wouldn't just let them have it. Maybe they were killed in the crash. Even so, the ship would have been seriously damaged and these primitives wouldn't have the technology to repair it. Oh, I know, sir. But is there any other explanation? It is a Robotech vessel. Hmm. We know they have... Reflex weaponry. Precisely, and this makes them very dangerous, so we must exercise caution. <sighs> Target pinpointed, Commander. We're launching fighters. This is SDF-1 Control, calling VF-102. You there on the exhibition grounds were on combat alert. Why haven't you taken off? You don't mean me, do you? Hey, what? Huh? Hey, don't uh, waste any more time. Uh, take off immediately what? and join the fighter squadron. What do you mean take off? The runway is demolished. Runway 2 is clear. You're fully armed and your jets are overheating, so prepare for immediate takeoff. All set, sir. Good hunting. Okay, if you insist. It's not that much different from the good old days with the flying circus. Yeah, but I never got shot at at the circus, Roy. You'll get used to it. Just tag along behind me for a while, if you can keep up with me. If I can, I'll do my best not to leave you behind. That's the spirit. Let's go get him, little brother.
In the next episode of Robotech, the aliens strike in full force and the desperate battle for the planet Earth reaches the very streets of Macro City. Human courage and skill are tested to the limit against the superior weapons of the Zentrotic. An heroic rescue attempt turns into a nightmare experience. Don't miss the incredible action and suspense of Countdown, the next thrilling chapter in the saga of Robotech. Stay tuned, another action-packed lineup of Saturday Morning Cartoon Max Out is coming your way. is going to be troublesome. I suppose I'll have to dispose of the little monster. Come on out and fight if you're not chicken! Well, well, so it's Halloween again so soon? That's a nice costume, Sonny, but that knife is too sharp for little boys to play with. We better fix this so you don't hurt yourself. You shouldn't be out so late. Now go straight home, your mother will worry. I see you've never dealt with a Viking! You can lower the bridge now. The enemy has gone. Tried it again. Yep, right on time. I'm through fooling around. Now I'm going to get serious. What 
are you doing here? I thought I told you. I'm on the good guy's side now, so take that, bad guy. <laughs> Crossers, I'm a coming back, and I ain't coming back to play marbles. You know, it's amazing the things you can accomplish for just peanuts. To survive a cosmic storm that devastates their planet, the Protectons and Terracors are forced to transfer their essences into the huge, powerful bodies of robotics. Robotics! Robotics! And once again, the ancient hostilities between the valiant Protectons and the evil Terracors erupt into violence, each side made stronger by an organic interface with human beings. Who puts the future in your hands? Robotics! 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 robotics. guys have one more trick up my sleeve it's too late exeter thanks to you we're dead meat now canock stop your knees knocking so i can hear myself think yeah get off his case canock he saved your neck a million times and he's gonna do it this time too thanks for the vote of confidence zaru i just hope you're right Our instruments indicate a total loss of power. I suggest we prepare for severe impact. <laughs> nice going, Commander X. That battle cruiser left us for dead. And from the looks of this place, I can see why. Look out! What are those things? Find us, or you will never survive. I will never surrender to you, Nemesis. Jerak, stand still so I can fuse you to the ground. Tyrannix, you couldn't hit the broad side of a planet. What's the matter, Stegor? Lose your taste for battle? No, Grunt. I've gained a taste for steel. Galaxon, we just had a little problem with our ship. We'll uh, be on our way as soon as possible, honest. For the sake of your own safety, that would be wise. Perhaps we can help you with your repairs. Well, sure, that, that'd be swell. All right. For 
Forget it. This ship is totally useless. It'll never fly again. Don't be so certain. Oh, what's the matter, Jarrock? Is that tiny rock too big for you? Rock? I thought your brain fell out. Wow. Okay. What's happening? I don't know, but it sure is neat. Let's try this one. Hey! How the heck is she doing that? Figure it out later, Bronze. We've got company. Terracors, get on someone. Stand here. In stand. Mira, behind you. Brand, Brand, come back. He's a coward, Argus! Like all you weak spirited protectons! And the fate of all cowards is death! Stay right here. We'll be back after these messages. To defeat their enemies, the evil Terracords and their schemes, by venture to destroy Argo, leader of the Protectors. Who puts the beauty in your hands? Who gives you robots? To command? To create them, you control them. Who puts the future in your hands? Argus comes with what you see here. Batteries not included. Venture Axle separately from the Blue Bradley. Hi there. Time for Timer, your roving reporter. I'm talking to you from inside a fantastic factory, your digestive system. You know what we build here? You. Not out of wood or metal, but out of food. You see, you are what you eat from your head down to your feet. Things like meat and eggs and fish you need to build up muscle tissue. Uh-oh. Hello. Appetite control. More protein. We need energy. Playing tennis today, you know. Whoops. 
All these motors in your body need a lot of fuel to go on, like carbohydrates, fats and proteins, vitamins, and so on. What's left over forms the building blocks you need, indeed, to grow on. Yes, you are what you swallow, so that next time you feel hollow, don't just fill your face with any old kind of treat. This goes for every kid or six-foot athlete. All you really are is what you eat. Goodbye. Thirsting for revenge. Terenix, the evil Terracor, attacks Bronx, strongest of the Protector. Who puts the future in your hands? Goodbye. Who gives you robots to command? Goodbye. Who creates them so you control them? Who puts the future in your hands? Goodbye. Who gives you robots to command? Goodbye. Bronx comes with what you see here. Batteries not included. Terenix sold separately from Milton Bradley. To survive a cosmic storm that devastates their planet, the Protectons and Terracors are forced to transfer their essences into the huge, powerful bodies of robotics. Robotics! And once again, the ancient hostilities between the valiant Protectons and the evil Terracors erupt into violence, each side made stronger by an organic interface with human beings. Who puts the future in your hands? Robotics! Robotics! Robotics. Get in my control console. Why? Together, maybe we can save my friends. If I get us mixed up in this, it'll be my people whose lives are on the line. Exeter, think. We are alone in a hostile environment. Our interdependence with those who inhabit this planet has already been established. You mean we need them as much as they need us? Precisely. <sighs> Toron, one of these days, your logic is going to get me killed. Here goes nothing. Well, three's my lucky number. Wait! Perhaps I can assist you. Ah, let them fend for themselves. What is Kalor's name? Is that? It's Brand. Argus, prepare to interface. Okay, Brant, let's nail him! Surprise! Tyrannics! Those warm-blooded creatures enabled the Protectors to defeat us! Then our next course of action is crystal clear. Well, now that we've got five seconds to breathe, maybe you could tell us what in blazes is going on here. Very well. Come. Ugly-looking bunch of lizards. Who are they? They are us. At least, they are what we used to be. What? This is Kankukor, the central intelligence of our planet. And this is what our planet looked like three million years ago. There were two civilizations on Skalor. The Protectons and the Terracors. We Protectons wished only for peace, but always, at every turn, the Terracors thirsted only for war. Finally, they built the ultimate weapon, the Terra Star. With it, Nemesis hoped to destroy the Protectons and conquer our galaxy. But to launch it, he would need Compucor. That ship could be our ticket off this dead-end planet. Behold, Xanadon, our capital city.
Argus, troop movements on the upper ridge. Brunt, Jerok, prepare the city for battle mode. We're with you, Argus. Come on, Brunt. Even a pipsqueak like you can help. Oh, stow it, Jerok. Just do what Argus says. will be mine! You fools! Come back and fight! Execution awaits all deserters! You won't stop me, Argus! This I vow! But the problems of our planet were far greater than the conflict between the Protectons and the Terracors. The star will go nova in less than two weeks. All life on the surface of Skalor will be destroyed. The end is near. Order! Please, order! We must work together! Protectons and Terracors, side by side! The Terrastar is complete, but I will need CompuCore to launch it. Clearly, we must transport the Council to another planet. That's insane! Only a few hundred would survive! Millions would perish! So what? They're genetically inferior anyway! I move we put it to a Council vote! CompuCore, is there an alternative? Stasis tubes would provide for the survival of the entire populace. A vote, then. Who favors Nemesis' plan? And who wishes to save all lives? <laughs> fools! Fools! Can't you see your time is up? You're all doomed! said she found it in your closet. I don't know. One of the guys must have... Must have what? Look, Dad, it's Where not... Where did you get it? Dad, I... Answer me. Who taught you how to do this stuff? You, all right? I learned it by watching you. 
Parents who use drugs have children who use drugs. To survive a cosmic storm that devastates their planet, the Protectons and Terracors are forced to transfer their essences into the huge, powerful bodies of robotics. Robotics! Robotics! And once again, the ancient hostilities between the Valiant Protectons and the evil Terracors erupt into violence, each side made stronger by an organic interface with human beings. Who puts the future in your hands? Robotics! 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 robotics, we will someday rebuild Skelor. If we survive long enough to use them. <laughs> Do you take me for a fool? You go first. Do you take me for an idiot? You could disconnect my stasis tube just as easily as I could yours. You go first. Together, then. But the unexpected forced CompuCore to take emergency action. Radiation levels lethal. Essence transfer to CompuCore commencing. Every crazy minute of it. This was a fine place to live, once. Well, I wouldn't give you two Ulthirian red cents for it now. Quit your carping and help us look for ship parts. And we'd better hurry. My tests indicate vegetation on Scalor is poisonous to humans. Which means the food we brought with us is all we're gonna get. I propose an alliance. At least until your ship is repaired. Forget it. You'll never fix that clunker. Besides, why should we help the Protectons? They saved our lives, Canock. So what? We this saved is... theirs, too. This is all very touching. I suggest we oil their knee joints and move on. It's worse than I thought. There's only enough food for a few days. We'll have to ration it. Then what? Starve while you try to repair this hopeless wreck? Forget that! 
I'm going to find the Terra Star, a real way off this junk pile planet. Who's with me? I'll come along. Staying with Exeter's misguided troops would be an exercise in futility. Uh, count me in, Canock. Traxxas? Uh, uh, don't think so. All right. You want to leave? Leave! I'll divide up the food. These traitors can eat dirt for all I care. We've already taken our share. So long, Commander. Stick on, look! Finish, traitors! Just the ones we've been looking for. You've been seeking us? Yeah, we've come to offer our services. Puny mortal, what have you to gain? We want off this planet. And stop poking me with that thing. You are giving me orders? You'll need us, Nemesis. You've seen what can happen with a human at your controls. Can you be trusted? Can you? Stay right there, another action-packed lineup of Saturday Morning Cartoon Max Out is coming up next. Dad? 7.50 once a week. They pay me 7.50 once a week. You see me walking tall down at the shopping mall Cause I'm making 7.50 once a week. Now every Monday morning when I get my pay, I'm feeling very rich indeed. I got a pocket full of money I can spend each day so I can pay for all the stuff I need. I got a great start, but here's the hard part. I got to plan for every expense. Cause every nickel counts when your entire allowance is only $7.50. But I do like to live it up. Every day after lunch at school, I treat myself to an ice cream sandwich. At 50 cents a piece, that comes to two and a half dollars every week. But that's okay, I got five dollars left. I'm still ahead of the game. I start with 7.50 at the top. My favorite bubble gum is 60 cents a pop. I got to choose and plan and do the best I can. I think I'm gonna have to learn to shop. By just comparing prices, I could save a lot. I spent two dollars for a bite to eat. This chicken enchilada really hits the spot, but it's on sale for 50 cents across the street. Now I would like to try a slice of pizza pie, but I am high and dry, it's no joke. I should have planned ahead, I spent it all instead. My allowance is gone, and I am broke. When you get 7.50 once a week Sometimes the situation seems a little bleak Cause it's a drag at the mall When you got no cash at all You're down the tube, you're up the creek Well, there goes my allowance I didn't plan ahead, I made some bad choices And I compared prices too late I guess I'll have to find a way to earn some more But that shouldn't be too hard 
Maybe I can do an extra household chore Like wash the car or mop the floor Or maybe help clean up the backyard I'll get my spending plan I'll get my shopping done And still have cash on hand That I can spend on fun I still get $7.50 once a week But now I learned some money management technique And I can save enough to buy some real cool stuff And I made my little fortune, so to speak On only $7.50 once a week That's my allowance $7.50 once a week I balanced my budget Surrender, or pay the consequences. Earth's most powerful soldier, or Earth's last chance to fight the spirals of Darkness has fallen on the victims of the zone. Zone Riders, looks like we're coming to a commercial. Let's fight the zone. Mr. Jennings? Well, Hero, what brings you here? Ah, uh, we have an hour before the briefing. Thought I'd get in a few games. Join me? No, I have no time for games. War games, Tank. War games? Kriegspiel? Nein. War is not a game. It must be taken seriously. Sorry, Lieutenant, I was unpacking some boxes. Ah, well, I wish to play some of the games, please. Actually, I just got something in that you can carry with you. You might find it more interesting. It's called Holographic Zone Battle. Oh, how does it work? It can be set for Defender or Zoner. It surrounds the planet with holographic battle. It really puts you in the action. Take it with you, try it out. Uh, let me know what you think. Amazing! Want to try it with me, Tank? Ah, nein. I learned my tactics the proper way, from military history.
The briefing is in less than an hour. Punctuality is one of my virtues. Thank you, Mr. Jennings. Uh, enjoy yourself, Lieutenant. See how exciting this is. I'll be the defender. Gee, excellent graphics. But five against one isn't fair. <laughs> That's more like it. Now at least it's ten to one. I'll get very little exercise. for people. Dudley Spiffington is dazzling on the courts, not with his game, with his whiter than white. Some dazzling white tennis balls, please. Oh, oh my finger! Oh, my white! <laughs> First, be calm and calm him down. Okay? Now, look at the blood. It's not so bad. It washes dirt out and helps heal the cut by clotting. This cut is bleeding quite a bit, so press down with a clean cloth, hold several minutes, and don't keep looking underneath. This is direct pressure and should stop the bleeding. Now, wash it gently and wrap it in a sterile dressing. If a cut keeps bleeding or is deep, keep up the pressure and get to a doctor right away. That Dudley, what a dud. Coming soon, Chester Wedding Bells Hockmeyer says... On Cemetery Links games, you can link up four players. But there's only ever one winner. Atari Links, the portable video arcade. The Atari Lynx sound quality is so good... It makes every game seem more realistic. Atari Lynx, the portable video arcade. The reason we've come to the Bay Area is the Marin County Generator. It's located here, on the old Sausalito historical site. As long as the zone put out from that generator cuts across the Golden Gate, nothing can sail. Which means the loss of our shipping links to Hawaii and Japan. And that means the loss of the entire Pacific Basin. We can't allow this to happen. I have a feeling Overlord expects us to try to do something about it. You got that right, Tank. Tactical radar reported his aircraft landing in Marin. Overlord and his Black Widows will be waiting for us. So it'll be a hit-and-run operation. Tank and Max will provide cover while Katarina and I mine the generator. Hero, you'll be our operational reserve. Anyone gets in trouble, you get them out. I... Good. Now then... We go in at precisely 0600 hours tomorrow. Breakfast is at 4, and I'll expect you all in the armory at 515 sharp. 
Got it? Yes, yes sir. sir. All right, until then, get some rest. You'll need it. Dismissed. Derek. Yes, Kat? There is an old Russian saying, we pay later with the worries we spend today. It's the commanding officer's job to worry. Your lives are my responsibility. And Overlord doesn't give second chances. Someday, this will all be over, Dirk. Then, we'll have time for other things. Yeah? Gosh, I I'm sorry we missed our report in, sir. It won't happen again. Hey, anybody home? Interesting new tactic. Ah. Not like Hero to leave things so messy. I think maybe I should talk to the commander about all this game stuff. Bandit sure taking his time. Yeah. If Overlord had sent me, I would have been back by now. Yeah. You could find your way back. One more crack like that, and I'll personally pierce your ears for you real quick. Go ahead, Razorback. But think about what Overlord will do to you if you miss. I trust that your mission was successful. Very successful. In a short time, Commander Dirk Courage is going to get a nasty surprise. Good. Very good. Now, let's go greet our visitor. Got a letter from my cousin in Chicago. He saw Rambo 12 last week. The ticket cost him $30. Well, he shouldn't complain. At least they got movies. Yeah, what else did your cousin have to say? Well, he says they're thinking about getting Major League Baseball going again. Figure they can get at least six teams together. Yeah, sure be good for morale. You hear that? Hey, it's Taka, that Japanese lieutenant from the Zone Riders. He's coming on awful fast. He's not gonna stop. Hold your fire, he's one of ours. Why the devil is he going into the zone? Stay tuned. The Zone Riders will be back. Stay right here. We'll be back after these messages. Captain O.G. Reborn here. I've got a great suggestion for fun that's out of sight. Get the family together for a family reading night. Turn Grandma in to Captain Hook, let Dad play gun again. Pick your favorite book, give out the parts, and let the fun begin. It's hilarious. <laughs> and it's easy. And it's great for any weather. Read a book tonight, you'll see I'm right. <laughs> reading is so together. The name is Mr. T. First name is Mr. Middle name is that period. Last name is T. Listen and listen good. I'm talking to you. When a new kid moves in on your block, what's your attitude? Do you figure? What do we need him for? Well, I pity the fool that makes that mistake. The friends you already got might not be all the friends you ever need. And when you keep new people out, just because they're new to you, you're only cheating yourself. That's what Robin, Jeff, and Kim found out. So don't you ever write nobody off just because he's the new kid on the block. You never know what you might be missing until you get to know them. So take it from me, Mr. T.
your food again? And now we return with more Spiral Zone action. You sure it was Lieutenant Taka? Hmm. I see. All right, thank you. Commander. I think you should have a talk with Hero. I wish I could. He's gone into the zone without his suit. What? Commander, this is Mr. Jennings. He runs the PX. Sir, I, I was hit with a stun ray. After I woke up, they said I was there working all the time. That's impossible. Unless it was someone disguised as you. This is post-19. Oh, we've been hit. Stage one alert. Stage one alert. Bandit. Yeah, Commander. It must have been him. He gave Hero this. Said it was a new video game. And then Hero rode into the zone unprotected. It's a holographic projector of some kind. Yeah, I have a feeling it's more than that. Sergeant Schmidt, get up to Dr. Lawrence. Jennings, thank you for your help. We have to face it. Overlord set out to get Hero, and he succeeded. Welcome to my headquarters, Lieutenant. Yes, it's nice to have you in our camp. As a hostage, and as a source of information. Now then, Lieutenant. Give us the details of Commander Courage's plan. I... I... Oh. Come on, Lieutenant. You really want to tell me. You're supposed to, you know. He's... planning to... attack the generator. I know that. I need you to tell me when. All done. Very good, Lieutenant. And now, tell me how. A frontal assault across the bridge thinks you won't expect that. That's all I know. Thanks to you, Lieutenant. We're going to have a surprise waiting for your former comrades. A very unpleasant surprise. Commander Courage, here are the detonators you requested. Uh, Commander? Yes, Dr. Lawrence? Yes, well, I, I've had a look at this little toy, most ingenious. A holographic projector connected to a video game grid with a suggestion generator. It not only entertains, it hypnotizes. Clever. Well, it's nothing extraordinary, actually. Nothing extraordinary? Well, however, I do think this is worth noting. The power source. You see, it's solar. Therefore, it won't operate within the zone. But <laughs> I fixed all that. With this battery power booster, Instead of a 10-foot sphere, it will now cover 30 feet and operate anywhere. Oh, yes, I, uh, well, the power boost burned out the hypnotic generator, but I didn't think you'd want that anyway. However, you might just find some use for it. Quite possible. Thank you, Doctor. Okay, Zone Riders, hit it! Uh, return safely, fellow.
enter the zone. This is Post 8, Richardson Bay. They've just turned north. On to Tiburon Road, sir. Into your position. Hurry! minutes. I'll do the other sides. Hero! Oh! Zone riders, home in on my signal. Hero, get out of there! He won't do it! He's gone! So we'll stun him! No, it's too risky. The vibrations could set off the detonators. And they can't be deactivated! We have to take him without weapons. Hit it! Time's running out. We'll have to leave him. One more try. Dispatch him. I told you, boy. Acting! I finished planting detonator. We have less than two minutes. Let's get out of here. It'll be a rough ride, kid, but it's the only way. Split up, meet at the bridge. Roger! I don't think you're going anywhere, Courage.
How are you feeling, Lieutenant? Hello. Much better. I owe you. <laughs> All of you. I can't wait to get out of here. I am so bored. <laughs> we thought you would be. Tank brought you a present. A game. Wow! Thank you, Tank. I thought you didn't like video games. <laughs> I don't. But this isn't a video game. Chess. A military game. It's time you learned some tactics. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back with more Spiral Zone action. And now we return with more Spiral Zone adventure. Earth's most powerful soldiers fight the Spiral Zone. Our world calls for courage, peace and freedom. We must own. Stay tuned, another action-packed lineup of Saturday Morning Cartoon Max Out is coming your way. Ready, Pop? Yep. Ready, son? Uh-huh. Let's go. Let's go. One, two. Lolly, 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 get your adverbs in. Lolly, 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 got some adverbs in. Lolly, 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 get your adverbs in. Come on down to Lolly's, get the adverbs in. You're going to need if you write or read or even think about it. Lolly, 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 get your adverbs in. Got a lot of lolly, jolly adverbs here. Anything you need and we can make it absolutely clear. Word. That's all it is, and there's a lot of them. That, that modifies, modifies a verb. Sometimes a verb, sometimes. It modifies an adjective, or else another adverb. And so you see, that is positively very, very necessary. Lolly, 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 get your adverbs here. Father, son, and lolly selling adverbs here. Got a lot of adverbs, and we make it clear. So come to lolly. Hello, folks. This is Lolly Sr. saying we have every adverb in the book, so come on down and look. Hello, folks. Lolly Jr. here. Suppose your house needs painting. How are you going to paint it? That's where the adverb comes in. We can also give you a special intensifier so you can paint it very neatly or rather sloppily. Oh, how? Suppose you're going nut gathering. Your buddy wants to know where and when. Use an adverb and tell him. Get your adverb. Use it with an adjective. It says much more. Anything described can be described some more. Anything you'd ever need is in the store. And so you choose very carefully every word you use. Use it with a verb. It tells us how you did. Where it happened, where you're going, where you've been. Use it with another adverb. That's the end. And even more. Reason. These questions are answered when you use an adverb. Come and get it, lolly, 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 get your adverbs here. Quickly, 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 get those adverbs here. Slowly, surely, really learn your adverbs here. You're going to need them if you read them, if you write or talk or think about lolly. If it's an adverb, we have it in lollies. Bring along your old adjectives, too, like slow, soft, and sure. We'll put them out with our L-Y attachment and make perfectly good adverbs out of them. Get your adverbs here. Lots of good tricks and lollies, so come on down. Lolly, lolly, lolly. Adverbs deal with manner, place, time. Lolly, lolly, lolly. Condition, reason. Father, son, and lolly. Comparison, contrast. Lolly, lolly, lolly. Enrich your language with adverbs. Lolly, lolly, lolly. Besides, they're absolutely free. Lolly, lolly, lolly. At
Sorry I can't take you right to the door, folks, but uh, I don't think your little toy would stand the strain of my engine. My big brother thinks that anything that isn't Starcom is a toy. I didn't say that. Leanna, don't be so sensitive. Without Starcom, we couldn't even exist out here. And without scientists, there would be no Starcom. All right? Well, I worry. You take care out there, little sister. You too, Mom. Sure, that's going ashore. Remember, we'll pick you up in 24 hours. Roger, Colonel. Watch out for the air whales. Dash, of all the stupid air whales are harmless. Dash was teasing. Honestly, the two of you. Niner to Starcom 1, come in. Hey, brother-in-law. Yes, Colonel. Any change in that signal from Station 1? Nope, nothing but a locator frequency. No information transmissions at all. Well, keep monitoring and let me know if there's any change. He really was worried about us. 
That's Starcom's job, Mother. Beautiful. You really love them. I just wish we knew more. They eat something, they move somehow, and they're not intelligent, as far as we can tell. Patience. As you always tell me, science takes time. Truer words were never spoken. Look, there! There, did you see it? It was a kite, wasn't it? Yes, stalking the air whales. The cameras were recorded. Come on, we've got to run that maintenance alignment check. Research station. Can't they see we're unarmed? They're getting awfully close. They better. Everyone, hang on to something. We're leaving. But this thing has no engines. I know. We're going on a Nantucket sleigh ride. Starting on Just a minute. That's got it. We've stopped moving. We could be anywhere. We're alive, that's something. Was that a Nantucket sleigh ride? Yep. What kind of sled? In the old days on Earth, when they used to hunt whales, sometimes a harpoon whale would drag a whale boat for miles. They called it a Nantucket sleigh ride. I used our drogue drift anchor as a harpoon and hitched us a ride on an air whale. Did the anchor hurt it? No, they don't feel pain. Or anything else, as far as we can tell. They're just... there! And we're here. But where is here? Good question. 
We're about a hundred kilometers from our last position. The air whales are faster than we thought. Well, you never shot at them before. We didn't shoot at them. Someone did. The scanners picked this up just before we were attacked. Rusty, your gunnery section. What is that? Well, we don't have anything like it. But if I was to guess, I'd say it was some sort of armed drift probe. A what? A floating mine, ma'am. Which means there's probably more of them around. Oh, no. Let's hope Dash gets back to us before we run into another one. We may have a long wait, Leanna. Our communications boy is gone. It could take weeks for them to find us. Weeks? But we only have enough air. For another day. I know, dear. I know. Stay right here. We'll be back after these messages. Starcom! In deep space, the Starmax bomber and Captain Rip Malone are under fire from the evil Shadow Force. The Starmax attacks enemy positions before returning to Starbase to refuel and rearm, using magna power and energy so advanced it works without batteries. The Starmax bomber, part of the massive Starcom battle fleet. They're fighting to save the Earth. Starcom! Shadow Force has a new airborne threat, the Shadow Parasite Attack Fighter, a one-man gunship with a weapon system that can blast anything out of the air, almost anything. Starcom's new F-1400 Starwolf can knock it down. Starwolf, high-speed, high-performance fighter that powers open to take on anything Shadow can dish out. Shadow Parasite Fighter and F-1400 Starwolf don't even need batteries. Figures and vehicles each sold separately. My Shadow Force space fleet will spread darkness throughout the universe! Infra Dark has a deadly new weapon, the Shadow Bat Battle Cruiser. But Starcom is ready with a high performance, high altitude Starmax bomber. Armed with the latest high tech weapons, it opens up to hold the men and hold the ammo. But can it hold up Infra Dark Shadow Force? Figures and vehicles each sold separately. The fight for freedom rages! Now let me get this straight. Two sixes and an eight be three of a kind unless it's a Tuesday or a month with an R? Right. What do you call this game again? Fizzbin. I'll get it. I'll get it. What's the game? Fizzbin. Good hand, huh? No, you got a red huh? nine. I do? Yeah, and since it's afternoon, you lose. Hey, wait a minute. Any word yet from your mom and sister? Nothing yet. They should have checked in by now. They probably lost track of the time. They're scientists. My mother's not an absent-minded scientist. She always remembers to check in. Something's wrong. You're right. Our patrols picked up a Shadow Force ship in the asteroid belt. It made a pass through Jupiter space. And it was rigged to carry destroyer probes. A mine layer. Leanna and Mom are in trouble. Hey, I think... I was going to say, I think we'd better get over there. The Station 1 beacon is still operating. The stations were close together when 2 went off the air. We'll start there. Be careful. The probes are slow, but the missiles they carry aren't. Yeah, and they can turn on a dime. has just got to be looking for us. And there's no way to let them know where we are. Sometimes you just have to trust your luck. Luck has no place in science. What's that whip? A whale? No. The kites and air whales don't show up on radar. Or even biodar. I don't know. You don't suppose... No. I'm afraid it's one of those probes. Only a few hours of air left. Calm down, Sean. Yeah. Gotta be looking for us. No mistakes now. They're running low on air down there. Don't worry. We'll find them. I have to worry. I've got family down there. So do I. 
Leanna's my wife, sir. Sorry, Victor. Nothing down there but the boy. I have a dozen probes. Closing at 20 kilometers, 90 degrees true. Heads up, guys. Tracking three groups of missiles. On my command, fire dispersion barrage. Hold it. Hold it. Now. Great. Missiles impact in five seconds. Four. Three. One, zero. On target. I have 12 possible targets. No, 15, 18, and closing fast. Make it. Lost ones. I remember. Yeah. Dash and I were on a ranger cadet camping trip in the Yukon. We got stormed in and nearly froze to death. I was so scared. When they found you both, I was so relieved. I never asked how you were located. The cadet master had a flare gun. She fired a flare and an airliner saw it. A flare? That's right. What's the matter? I have an idea. It may not work. But anything's better than simply sitting here doing nothing. This is Dash. I've covered Red Sector 2. Moving on to Red Sector 3. They might not even be at this depth anymore. They might not even be alive. Slim here. Just blew a probe at Vector 3.95. Beginning my turn. No, wait. If you're still getting probes on your track, it may mean the probes drifted your way. And if the probes did, the station could have. Right. Stay on course. I'll be right over to support you. Everyone okay? Fine. What's the plan? I've evacuated all the air on board into the spare fuel tank. Yeah? So? Now I'm going to use the retros to fire it at that probe up there. What? That's our air! Mother! <laughs> that leaves us with only two hours of air. What did you hope to gain? I'm betting that that probe will send out our distress signal. Slim! I've got a concentrated oxygen flare at 330. I see it! Let's go! Okay. 
fine now, son. But we've only got a few minutes of air left. That makes us about even. We've only got a few minutes of fuel. Victor, Slim, you go in and lock on. We'll ride shotgun. Activate Magnolia. All ahead, one half speed. Dash, we've got company. Bro, lots of them. Take them if they close. They're just hanging up there. Think they're afraid of us? Probably waiting for us to run out of gas. In my case, I think they've got two minutes. My tanks are dry, Slim. Sorry. I'm nearly empty. Yeah? Yeah, buddy? I think I'd rather go down fighting. Roger that. We might as well do this right. Here they come. How many women's husbands actually ride to their rescue? Hey, not in front of the guys. Didn't I tell you to watch out for those air whales? For your information, big brother, it was an air whale that saved us. Really? Among other things, yes. Well, you'll never hear me insult an air whale again. Okay, three red cards beat four black, but only if there are no queens. Are you sure you've got the rules right? Stay right there, another action-packed lineup of Saturday Morning Cartoon Max Out is coming up next. Yeah, Rocky, we sure did. I wish I was smart like you, boss. Turn it on the radio. Okay, boss. The police believe the robbery is the work of the notorious Rocky and his pal Muggsy. They were last seen on the Turn it off the radio. The bridge. Gee, some haul. Yeah, all 14 carrot. Carrots? Carrots? Who, what, where, when, who, where, where, what, where, who, when? Hey, Muggsy, we better get some shut-eye if and we're gonna pull that job tomorrow. Okay, boss. Why, those dirty crooks? Someone ought to teach them crime doesn't pay, and it looks like that someone's gotta be me. Hello, calling Rocky. Hello, Rocky. Am I getting true to you, Rocky? They're saying you trust your pal Muggsy with that suitcase of jewelry. <laughs> Don't make me laugh. Look at Muggsy laying over there pretending he's asleep. And all the time he's thinking, getting ideas. <laughs> That'll 
teach us to get ideas. But boss, you know I don't get any ideas. Well, see that you don't. scheme didn't wait, did it? That Rocky. <laughs> A million laughs. <laughs> that Rocky. <laughs> But, 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 boss, I... Oh. 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 Ah. Maybe that'll teach us. Now get back on a couch and go to sleep. Okay, boss. Hey, Muggsy. Kimmy. Give me a light. Okay, boss. Yeah, boss. Yeah, yeah. Gee, I'm glad you're not mad at me no more. Oh, now you're mad at me again. But, but, boss, I... Now get into the room. Now go to sleep! Showdown, eh? Why you? Why you dirty? found out where we was. But boss, but, 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 but... Isn't it wonderful what you can do with some wire and a few electric bulbs? Superpowers. And watching over them from Center Neptune, Seven Zark Seven. Watching 
warning against surprise attack by alien galaxies from beyond space. young orphans protecting Earth's entire galaxy. Always five, acting as one. Dedicated, inseparable, invincible. Somewhere off the west coast of the United States, 900 fathoms beneath the surface of the sea, is this secret and extremely important world defense base. Center Neptune. One of Earth's most precious minerals is mined and refined down here. Vita Lumis. It's an amazing ore discovery that renews the worn out soils of Earth and other planets. Without this precious ore, nothing can be grown. And people in many galaxies will face starvation. To guard this vital base against attack by space pirates and alien enemies, is the huge responsibility of five incredible, highly specialized people called G-Force. Oh, I'm Seven Zark Seven, complex computerized coordinator for G-Force. Everything clears through me here at Center Neptune. I keep watch every minute, day and night, on each member of the G-Force team. I don't need sleep. I'm a, a robot, you know. <laughs> Some call me a guardian robot. Oh, there's an emergency. The cosmic space control informs me a mysterious UFO has been sighted. I've got it on my scanner. It's a radio-controlled attack monster from Spectra, a very advanced planet in a hostile alien galaxy. My sensors indicate it's heading for one of the fortified vaults where our valuable Vital Lumis is stored. Vault number five, alien aircraft. Red alert, you have an intruder. and any aircraft units, stand ready, fire! to steal our precious vital lumen. We give it freely to any planet that needs it. I'd better get G-Force on this right away. Come in, G-Force. Hot scan. Center Neptune calling. This is 7, Zark 7. Come in, Mark. Okay, ears on. 10-2, Zark. Assemble your team, Commander. I've located an invader from Spectra on my scanner. Proceed to point 13X, grid 40. 
I will now transmute you to full jet. Big test. Okay, transmute. conversion phases I control, but Mark's the real leader of G4. And Princess is the only female member of the team. This big fellow is Tiny Harper. He pilots the command ship and assembles the crew. pay special attention to Princess. I really don't know just why. This is Kia. He's very special and different. He was manufactured, grown from a single embryonic cell in the laboratory. His speech is a little peculiar, but his powers are amazing. And finally, this is Jason. Very capable, but just a trifle eager and hot-headed sometimes. So emotional. I do wish he had solid-state circuitry like mine. Force members all have miniaturized cerebonic implants which give them fantastic abilities beyond those of other humans. Orphans who have been trained almost since birth to develop those secret and mysterious powers. Even though they're so capable, I wish I could be with them on dangerous missions because I do worry. But I'm just an old stay-at-home stationary think tank. Hold your course, G-Force. You're right on target. Good, good, good. Uh, good, good, good. My bare hand. Keop, you can't go after it all alone. It's from Spectra. This is the third time we've been invaded by them. Just let me get a laser bead on it. This will be their last attack. I believe that's what you said last time, Jason. Uh-oh. The invader has disappeared from my scanner. I'm afraid you're on your own now, team. Big Ten, Zark. I am breaking contact now, but I'll be on standby alert. Good luck and over. Good old Reliable Zark says it's invaders from Planet Spectra again. Wonder what they'll look like this time, Mark? Probably two-headed. Well, they say two heads are better than one. Not on the same body. Hey, team, look! There's something down there! Look, 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 look. Ocean. We know it's the ocean. We're going for it! It may be attacking our underwater base. Nothing on the scanners, Mark. Not a sign of it. Mark, I think we should have stayed above. Gotta be above. Surface tiny. Alive? 
Yeah, it's alive with ugly aliens. Let's give it a laser blast. Dive at it, Tiny. Hold it. We can't destroy it yet. I can, believe me. Just let me get up. Look, Jason, it's only one attack vehicle. There may be more. We've got to follow it and find its base. We're going to play tag. Isn't that fun, Tiny? We'll be right back with more Saturday Morning Cartoon Max out after these messages. バトルシャーク登場。これがバトルシャークの秘密だ。電車が溜まると、復興オープン。ドライハッシャー。オープンシャーク。バトルシャーク発進。バトルコンビネーション 2。ポピーより堂々発売中。陸海王、海明王、空大王陸海空の最強ロボが全エネルギーを集結超ハードメカゴッドシグマ宇宙合体合体完成宇宙合体デラックス超合金ゴッドシグマポピーより堂々発売中 新メカを紹介しよう秘密メカを運送これが衝撃の戦艦電磁タイガーだオープン電磁ファイター発進電磁ファイターからランデンジーへデイジチェーン超合金ランデンジーデラックスデンジタイガーポピーより発売中超合金
step on our tail? Fools. They'll be sorry they ever found us. They're powerless against our prismatic reflectors. Disintegrator ready. On target. Get set. Someone tampered with the prismatic refractor system. Check it out. I'll open the landing bay and let the Phoenix come aboard. The door. See, it's open, Keyhop. I wish they wouldn't do that. Now they're all in terrible danger. Oh, I can't take this strain. If they don't contact me pretty soon, I'm afraid I'm going to have an electrode failure. No sign of the Vita Loomis. I thought this whole operation was nowhere. I'm sure this is the base. We just haven't looked hard enough. Oh, bad news. Aha! So, Earth sends children against us. Against the most powerful spaceship from Crab Nebulae. <laughs> We're getting tired of your invasions. Uh, pain in neck. We've got to use the rotor force. Jet spiral on minus two. Prepare to surrender yourselves, children. Our supreme ruler will be highly amused when we bring you back to our galaxy. Hate to disappoint your ruler. But you can take him this message just for laughs. Bug off! among the enemy, but they'll be up again shortly. Incompetent fool, you have failed your mission. You know what this means? G-Force possesses strange powers. I must report you to the Great One. We await your decision, O oh, Luminous One. The Space Terrapin has outlived its usefulness. It must be destroyed. Your word is law, and it shall be done, O oh, Great Galactic Ruler. We will need much deadlier weapons and more brilliant strategy to overcome Earth and its G-Force defenders. Yes, great light of wisdom. Instruct Commander Gorak to abandon the Terrapin and return with what he has in the escape ship. I will order the space Terrapin destroyed immediately. The Spectre Commander is escaping in the nose cone. Goodbye, G-Force and your whirlwind pyramid. Get to the Phoenix. And fast. This thing's gonna blow. We're all aboard. Get it, Tiny. G-Force has only a few seconds to escape. If they have no other alternative, they'll have to transmute into the fiery phoenix for extreme emergencies only. That requires full use of all their seraphonic powers. It's a last resort, their ultimate defense. Our fuel pod's jammed in the hatch. Give it full power. Break it loose. Okay, Tiny, try to blast off. We don't want to go to the fiery phoenix unless we have to.
Okay, we tried. All members of G-Force prepare to transmute to the fiery Phoenix. I'll take over, Tiny. Modulator set, fusion on. I won't go home in disgrace after all. <laughs> What's that coming out of the clouds? Well, I almost had total digital readout failure, but G-Force made it. Mark activated the subatomic generator perfectly to transmute them into the fiery phoenix. Then they can recover the vital lumens from the ocean where it fell. In 24 hours, they'll resume their normal shapes and be ready for their next assignment. And I'll always be here to coordinate and keep a watchful eye on them. I don't know why I worry about G4 so much. If anybody can take care of themselves, they can. But I guess even a little robot is human enough to love his family. Oh dear, I think that's another emergency already. It's a good thing I don't need sleep. Stay right here. We'll be back after these messages. これ仮面ライダー、ホイマシン、スーパーワンの変身メカ。香りにオープン。消火バンパー。ハイスピードウィング。レーダーサーチオープン。オートとダブルジェット。ミサイル発射。コピーか、仮面ライダー、ホイマシン
right here. We'll be back after these messages. Oh, energy. Sometimes I think I'm running out of energy. Seems like we use an awful lot for heating and lighting and driving, reading and writing and jiving. Energy, you'd think we'd be saving it up. Energy, you can get it by damming up a river. Energy, a windmill can make the breeze deliver. But even with milling and damming, I need are so much more demanding for energy we have to use some kind of fuel chop 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 the cavemen use wood to stop the fires chop 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 they made all the tools that they require chop 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 inventions got more and more inspired the fires got higher and higher Clearings got wider and wider. Energy, they were burning about all their wood up. Then one day, men discovered that coal would do it better. Miners dug, and it looked like it might just last forever. It seemed like the final solution. It started the Industrial Revolution. Energy, would just keep on digging it up. Now in 1859, way out in western Pennsylvania, a man had built a rig that got some laughs from folks who came in. But suddenly a mighty roar came up from under the ground. Soon a gush of gushing oil so tall who stood around. Now no one knew when that gush of blue, the petroleum years were honest, or that so many cars and trucks would come to cause a crisis. Energy. We're looking to try and find some new kinds of energy. Exploring to try and make a new find. Nuclear and thermal and solar. If we miss, we'll get colder and colder. Energy. We gotta stop using you up. So don't be cross when mama says turn that extra light out. Just turn it. Off till we find us a fuel that never runs out. If everyone tries a bit harder, our fuel will go farther and farther. In a Jeep, we're gonna be stretching you out. infinite energy beyond scientific understanding. Now, this energy has been transformed into a new weapon.
It's me. Did you get it? Yeah, it's right here. I just want to make sure you'll help me if I give you this. <laughs> I never break a deal. Just bring it to me tomorrow evening. Promise me I can't stand it anymore. Stop wasting so much time with me on the phone and just come. Remember, it's a promise! It's partly cloudy and looks like rain. Thunderstorms are expected in the mountains, but it should clear by tomorrow. <laughs> Hey, did you read today's paper? That accident yesterday was pretty strange. Really? What are you talking about? In that weird traffic accident last night, the driver was killed, don't you know? Oh, that's what you're talking about. You know it was no simple accident. The truck was driven into the ground like some kind of steak, like something was pounding down on it. You're kidding! No. It's like some monster. Picked it up and threw it. That's pretty scary. <laughs> what do you think it was, Show? Show? Huh? Well, uh, it, it could have been some kind of monster. <laughs> <laughs> huh? You're always saying the same silly, stupid things. What's the matter with you, huh? <laughs> Show! What are you doing? You've got to come with me. You're supposed to be at the Associated Student Council meeting in a few minutes. Don't tell me you forgot. Oh, yeah, the meeting. Wait, wait, wait. Sorry, I've got to go. Mizuki, Mizuki! Hey, what do you think's the matter with him? Well, that's Mizuki. She's vice president of the Student Council. Don't you know she and Sho have been friends together since they were small? I don't believe that guy's in the Student Council. What's his job? Secretary. <laughs> that figures. Hmm. The uncompleted Zoonoid showed up around here. Sorry I held up the meeting, but I had a little problem. Um... Don't worry, Mr. Fukumachi. All of us know you work hard and always have. Well, let's begin now. Miss Vice President? First of all, I would like to explain today's agenda. We have to talk about the club budgets, which are coming up. Always work hard, huh? 
Actually, I don't like this kind of work. The only reason I joined the council was because... Hmm. Damn, my body feels like it's burning. I don't have much time left. Sho, are you going home now? Tetsuro! Do you know where my sister Mizuki is? She doesn't have any time for me. She's working with Mr. Makashima. That would be it for today. Well, let's adjourn it this time. Mizuki! Huh? Vice President and Accountant. Could you please remain and help me prepare the budget for the clubs? Love to help. Oh, yes. Really, ma'am? Well, show. Sure, since today is Saturday, why don't we just hang out? Find him and kill him. And get back the units. The number one priority is to retrieve the units. Find them at any cost. Find them at any cost. <laughs> <coughs> They're not stupid. They'll probably come to me, but I won't be easily defeated. <coughs> if it comes to that, I can use this. <laughs> well, I feel sorry for you, Sho. Why? Mizuki's pretty, I suppose, but from what I've seen, she really doesn't have very good taste in men. You know? Uh, what are you talking about? I'm not in love with Mizuki. Besides, I... What? <laughs> Come on, show. I know it's true. to see you. <laughs> Where are you going, Malmet? Escape? There's no escape from us. Malmet! Don't call me Malmet, you son of a bitch! Stop this and give me back my humanity! Wow! <laughs> Shut up, you worthless scum! <laughs> You'll have to take us to them. Where? Where are the Giver units? If you tell me, you'll die easily. That's the most you can ask for. No! I'm human! I'm human! I'm human! Human! Mizuki has a boyfriend. I know you mean Akito Makashima, but I'm her brother, and I like you better than him. Don't give up, Sho, and good luck. As if you liking me more than him is going to help. Don't you know what they say? Try to target the horse if you want to hit the master. And you're a big horse, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah? <laughs> Hurry up. Find those units. I don't want to die. Oh, you could not survive anyway. 
Because you left before completion, you can survive only one week after leaving Kronos. You're dead. Hurry. I can't stand it anymore. I promise to make you feel better after, and only after you come. I knew this would happen to you, Balmat. Damn, you lied to me. I found it, Captain! It's in the frozen unit case! You found it! <laughs> I'll never give up the unit! Never! Never! There were three missing units. Three of them. Find them all. Immediately. But Mr. Mikoshima! Is there a problem? Grickle was injured in the explosion and lost his transformation ability. No! <laughs> he's worthless to us. His brain was damaged. Now he's crazy. Wants to massacre the entire team. You idiot. You incompetent moron! Your team can eliminate Gregor on its own! You have permission to transform! Remember, we can create Zoonoids anytime, but not the Giver units! Recover them! It's imperative that you recover them! They're all fools! Is there a problem? It's only a minor problem, but don't worry, I'll recover them! Of course I trust you. I want to believe it's so. <laughs> Even the head of the Japan branch is a fool. Mr. Makashima. Yes, what? I wish you the best. This might be related to that explosion. What do you think happened up there on the mountain show? Where that thing came from? Show you shouldn't touch that! This must be part of some machine that blew up. But what is this strange thing inside? It looks like some kind of creature. Hey, this thing could be some kind of landmine. <laughs> so This thing is alive! Sektora, ah! help me! Ah! 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 This thing is going inside of me! Dosha! You should know, Mizuki. Mizuki, I think Sho loves you an awful lot. He's got to be kidding. I'm not. I was watching him. He was staring the whole time. He probably thinks you're just teasing him. Really? But I'm too young to think about love. Do you like Agito because he's more masculine? I think that Sho Fukumachi is old enough for love. Hey! 
There it is. Let's get it. Get him. Go! Well, where is he? He asked us to help him, but he's not even here to work. I wonder what's going on. Where could he be? He's late. I wonder how long we should sit around and wait for him. I wonder where he ran off to. I'm mad. He asked us to help him. He should be here. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Nothing. I just thought I heard my brother's voice. Really? Boss, what are we going to have to do about him? Leave him alone. Let Gregor take care of him. We'd only have to kill him. <laughs> <laughs> Recover the units to accomplish this mission. What cowards? Who is he? There shouldn't be anyone who can create zoonoids except for Cronus. I must kill him myself. I am the leader of Amor. I am not as weak as Gregor. It's my opponent. Whatever powers you have, you cannot win. Really, you? What? What's happened to me? You are show. I can't believe it. <laughs> What's the matter, Tetsuro? You're talking like I'm some kind of monster or something. Show. 
Oh, oh, my body. My body, I have become a monster. No. No. Show look. Tetsuro, what is that? Wow, unbelievable. Whatever it is, it's dangerous. It's a
I know you guys liked it because we love it. I just wanted to show you what my lovely Yizzle made for me for Father's Day. So I brought something to share and it is this lovely drawing. Oh, my Yizzle did it for me. Look at the apples and say happy Father's Day. I also got these lovely smiley faces always smiling at me and it say, I love you from my older one. It's so lovely. And please make sure if you have not yet, go and well, bam! Max, Max smash, smash that like button and subscribe if you have not subscribed already. The ones who are waiting in the rafters, please come out and play with us in the light. So make sure that you are here next week from 8 to noon. Eastern Standard Time. Right here on Saturday Morning Cartoon Max Out.